today thank you in on point on my special show i am joined by a legislator barrel one may sangi a person who has broken the glass ceiling in mizoram's politics but she is not the only one there are two more but the fact is that at least women are out there in assembly though the representation of women is low in the states of northeast but then there is always a beginning so barrel first thing first why did you have to come into electoral politics what prompted you to come well i had quite a history um but i will not be able to give you all right now because it's going to be very lengthy so to cut it to the chase i was in the uh profession of entertainment i so so i should say and uh i do a lot of interviews and um i interviewed politician uh bureaucrats academician and uh many other more so then i have learned that there are so many things that needs to be done out there and also uh from what i have interviewed and from what i've heard and learned i feel like i have to be in it but by interviewing them on the media by giving them suggestions or advice is not enough and i get more interested into uh setting my food inside and i do develop the passion and the de- determination to go for it so i guess that's what prompted me because there are so many tasks to carry on you had a successful career you had a uh, public profile but electoral politics uh, is a rough place for anyone both uh, uh, men and women True. so why did True. you choose that i guess um I don't want to go for the easy the easy thing. I don't want to go for anything that that is going to have lenient on me. I want to fight a, a a hard battle. So it's like obviously this is like a Herculean fight. This is a a very massive things for me and especially for for the youngsters in politics and for a first timer like me. But uh like I said I wanted to uh test myself, my potential ability and capability and uh the the passion that I have been carried on for the past 7 to 8 years and um I believe in myself so I moved on for what I think I can achieve and uh here I am fighting my dreams and achieving my dreams. but tell me what are the biggest challenges for women in mizoram when it comes to politics why do they have such low representation um well i guess this is the same issue for any other north east states or maybe uh, let's talk nationwide uh but i think that we had a uh, gender classified politics for many many decades um thinking that this uh, this belongs to the men in the society um definitely it may takes a uh, physical fitness it may takes um you know a, ma- a ma- it may looks like a masculine job but when i step foot and when i what i find out is that g- politics does not have any gender in it so if even if we're male or female then we can both survive and we can both uh, fight for it because this is this is like survival of the fittest so um i just uh, believe that um mm, when when we had the determination to break for the to break the barrier to like you said to break the glass to break the ceiling um we we can definitely go for it i think we need to have more awareness and we need to uh, i guess give out more education on it educating each other especially the female in the society and um also the female legislature who had been elected not just uh, this election the previous election i think they they all had um they all had left uh, a very a very honorable footsteps and i think we need to follow that and we need to take that and uh yeah we have to take so much uh into consideration and then step foot for it so that's why even the the fact that i'm here right now really gives me a challenge the challenge that i should live up to the expectation of the female the women in the society so that next time next election they would say that if she can do it then i can do it so with that kind of vibe and with that kind of trend i i think uh many women will be participating in the next election hopefully what was the uh, reaction of your family when you broke this news that you know you've got the ticket you're going to campaign uh, you're going ahead with the decision was your family yes. supportive very very supportive they had um they're my biggest supporter i just like to mention that in politics you can't just do it alone this is this is not a, a this is not something you can achieve on your own so you always need supporter and that 
has to be your family. Um, this is this may be my first uh, first time um, in the MLA, but I I was a corporator in two thousand twenty one elected. So uh, right from then on, my family um, had been the backbone of me, the backbone of my political career, and I would like to, you know, give credit, all the credits to them. They are very, very supportive. In fact, my dad went out with me to go for campaign. He went house to house campaign with me. Uh, he he drive me around. He was the driver till the right from the beginning till the very end. Uh, my mom stays at home and you gave him a uh, tough she, job. She, huh? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and uh, I guess this even the, the I, I dedicate even this victory to my family as well. Okay. Okay. So why did you join ZPM? Uh, how is that different from other political parties? Um, we had seen the other parties. Uh, I think I don't need to mention them. Uh, we had seen the other parties, how they performed and how far they have come. Um, so from where they, from where they, uh, had left, I should say, from where they pick up and where they had left. I believe that we, it's time for us to pick up. It's time for the ZPM to pick up something new and to try something new to bring more development in the state. So, um, if 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 because we have read the books of the two parties for the past thirty five to thirty six years, um, I don't I don't think I should rewrite. I should reread that. So that's why I wanted to read the uh, the new chapter with ZPM. That's why I chose and go for it. Are you hopeful that the women reservation bill that was passed in the parliament uh, will achieve the results uh, which the people think of it should? Um, I do think that because in the municipal corporation, we uh, there is a 33% reservation uh, for the women. And uh, that had prompted um, six, right now, you know, uh, uh, as our population, we have only 19 wards here. So um, 19, okay, from 19, 33% reservation is uh, six seats for the, for the women. And uh, that has prompted another, another candidates to, who had been elected in the past with, uh, in the reservation seat to go for the general fight, the general seat. And uh, even in ISO, we, had, uh, we have two, two women who contest from the general seat and who won. And I guess uh, that that was the desirable result that we are all waiting for. So likewise, I also hope that uh, this 33% reservation in the legislature and the assembly would definitely bring the results that everybody's expecting. Why do you think that uh, ZPM was able to uh, defeat MNF, defeat Congress, emerge as a major political force? Why, why did that happen? Yes, um, that had been a question right from the start uh, because uh, seeing yourself, seeing the party winning a landslide victory is uh, is something that is not quite expected from the people in the state, but uh, let let uh, the party speak alone. So um, I think the major, the major um, reason would be, uh, like I've mentioned earlier, we had seen how the state uh, had grown. Uh, from 1987 till 2018, 2018, 20, uh, 22. So, um, and also we compared compared our state with the development that had been brought to different states. It could be Northeastern, it could be the other uh, central state as well. So um, we also wanted to bring many changes and development that had uh, happened in the other states, in the nearby states. So uh, we, we understood and we have come to the realization that we can do it. We can bring this kind of changes or development that people are enjoying the benefits from the government or um, any anything uh, I, I can't tell all, all of the factors, but um, having seen that, having witnessed that, we really, really wanted to do something different this time um, for the betterment of the state, for the uh, betterment and, and the development of the state. So I believe that is one reason why people casted their vote uh, for ZPM, believing, having a very, very big and very big belief and faith in us, thinking that we will be able to um, bring all the uh, manifestos and all the policies uh, to come into reality. So I think that's the reason why people have casted their vote for us. Baron, do you, do you ever think that, uh, you know, women have become a uh, important voter in Indian politics? They vote more than men. Their percentage has gone up. They are more educated. Definitely. They make more civil servants. They become yes. um, uh, more powerful voices in industry, uh, entrepreneurial sector. But when it comes to politics, their representation mm -hmm. is low. Why is that? Mm -hmm. 
Well, that is a very, very uh, hard and, and tricky question because um, uh, I had been asking myself or like for a very long time trying to understand and trying to come to the conclusion, but it's very, very difficult um, to describe or to give out one um, main factor or one main reason. But uh, yeah, before I go on to, uh, to your question, I would just like to say that we talked about women empowerment and many have paved the way for this. But when we, the way we understand the concept of women empowerment is not quite right. Um, let me just uh, give my own opinion. We, when we talked about empowering ourselves or empowering the female, this isn't about surpassing the male or uh, taking away the rights and equality that they have, but this is about uh, becoming better version of us, becoming who we are, and also in and also to let us know and realize that if we are capable for this, if we are potent, if we have potential for this job, this particular opportunity, then we can all go for it. So that that is the the main concept. This is this isn't about physical equality. This is about cerebral equality. So those who have uh, equal potential would get equal job or would face equal um, interviews. So this is the concept of the women empowerment. And uh, yeah, there, there could be many more, but uh, let me uh, cut it short. So I guess, uh, like you've said, uh, we have seen many women in uh, education. Uh, and also let's talk about the uh, market, um, many, if you come to our state, you would see all the female in, in the market selling uh, their vegetables and the, the other stuffs out there. But yes, like we said, in politics, uh, maybe the the patriarchal society that we are brought up to or the, the patriarchal practice that we have been uh, practicing is uh, one of the, I think, one of the reasons why we are a little discouraged to go for it. But like I've mentioned, it, if, if I can do it, if, if just the 32 years old can can do it then definitely women who are much educated women who are much intelligent who are much better than me can definitely do it so i guess i'm i'm planning a very important milestone and i'm going to be a challenge for them so and definitely i will keep challenging all the female in not just the society the whole nation yeah, i had the i had the opportunity to mizoram but uh, that was the last decade uh oh. the election took yes I, I i covered the mizoram election in 2003 i stayed I there for yes. a month so yes, I I I have seen the state. It's a it's a very it's a very beautiful state. But Thank what you. will be your priority? What will you be doing in assembly? What do you intend uh -huh. to do? Have you thought of bills? Have you thought of uh -huh. uh, some legislation you would like to get? As a legislator, mm -hmm. what would you be doing for Mizoram apart from the place you have been elected? Uh yes, we had um, we had manifested a lot of policy to to the people to the voters out here, um and uh, this talks about one one important uh thing is that we I think in the last elect in the last uh, session in the last assembly session back in two thousand twenty one or two thousand twenty two, our ZPM um, Emily had uh, moved a bill and that is called drivers bill. Because the drivers out here uh, do not have, uh, do not enjoy any consolidated funds or um, any any sort of compensation or uh, how do they call it? All the pension scheme, it's not available for them. So that's why we we promised them that we will bring in the private transport bill. And uh, I've learned because uh, I took it from him and I learned and I I read through that and I also looked at the other state and how they're practicing and how did how did they apply that and um that is one of the policy that i've been carrying on carried on this uh, to the constituency where i'm elected because many many uh, voters out here many uh, are supporter of uh, many supporters out here are um, having the profession of driving. It could be bus, it could be taxi, it could be uh, public transport and private transport as well. So we promised them that under Article 2 and Reddit 66, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there, sh there can be a consolidated funds for the driver. So um, we promised them and I promised them that we we will uh, move the bill again. And this time, surely, since we won the majority, uh, we would definitely uh, pass the bill and um, the drivers can enjoy the benefit and also we talk about crop insurance because uh, as you know um agriculture is the main source of income out here and more than 60 percent are uh our farmers i should say so we really wanted to bring in the crop insurance which is practiced in the central so a lot of people were saying that you know even in uh, mizoram the welfare politics triumphed uh welfare politics in india every other part triumphs it also triumphs yeah. in uh, mizoram and ZPM uh, came on the welfare politics model. Mm -hmm. 
well, I guess people have a lot to say about every party, <laughs> but um, I think we don't need to uh, clarify ourselves or we don't need to address by telling them that we are not this or we are this. Um, the actions will definitely speak for us. So in a few years, they would definitely know what are the components and what, what ZPM really inspired to do or try to do, or is this just going to be like a movement uh, that will end soon? So I guess the actions will speak definitely louder than, than what, what we have to say right now. Uh, before I let go of you, you know, Northeast is very different from uh, other parts of uh, India. Yes. But, uh, you know, as I've been asked you, you know, women representation is low. What would you be doing in the next five years to get more women in politics in position of power as leaders, mm -hmm. as decision mm -hmm. makers, as, mm -hmm. as, as, as yeah. someone who can influence, make policies at the high table? What will you be doing? Well, that is a very challenging and very good question. First of all, thank you for that. But yeah, the answer may be a little bit uh, hard to just lay it out right there. Um, I'm just good. I'm just a beginner. I'm just a first timer. But I, I know myself and I believe in myself so much that I am going to bring changes like I have done in, in the uh, previous corporation where I served. And also now I have a bigger chance to represent the female, represent the women. So definitely this is going to be a golden opportunity for me. And um, I have done a bit of a research going through Googles and uh, reading uh, many uh, articles that I that I can uh, can reach. So um, there I, I saw that we need, like I've mentioned, we need more training, we need more education on this, we need more, um, how do we say, it? yeah, we need more interaction with the female politician. Uh, as uh, there are so many NGOs out here, uh, there are so many organizations out here who can organize uh, such a program. And then uh, we, the female uh, politicians, should step forward telling them that this is not reserved for any other uh, person. This is for people who have the aspiration and the inspiration to serve the state and the people. This, there is a place for people uh, who have the passion to work for, work for the development of the state. So they're always welcome. And I believe that we need to have uh, a lot of conversation, maybe one-on-one -on -one or maybe uh, through the organizations and the churches as well. So I'm trying to organize uh, that kind of a, a program or trying to have put up those projects so that I can reach more, I can reach out to more females uh, in, in the constituency. And also let's talk about the, the whole state um, because uh, I, I have received a lot of compliments and also advice to uh, you know, to be more open up to the other female who are interested, but who are not uh, brave enough to set their foot in yet. So um, I guess uh, the, the job is in my hand and I, I, with the opportunity and with the platform that I have right now, I guess I can encourage and inspire more women to follow the footsteps or maybe to ask them to join hands with me and uh, go um, hand in hand. Um, also, I guess, um, you know, I, I think... Um, in in all the projects, uh, all the uh, how do I say the the future the future works that we're going to organize and we're going to have and give out. I think at least uh, I should make it as a maybe I, I'm not sure, but I think I should uh, make it as a trend that at least one female should be involved in it, so that it it could be a beginning stage, it could be a learning stage for them, and um, maybe that couldn't be just a, a hard and fast rule. I can't just pass it on my own, but I definitely can, you know, just for like a trial. Uh, trial time, maybe I can ask them to be involved and um, they, they definitely would, uh, after five years, they would want to step out. But uh, let's see, let's see how it is. Like I said, I'm just a beginner. Um, I don't have much ideas, but even those concepts that I have had uh, would definitely help the female here in the society. I, I greatly believe in that. Barrel, thank you so much for talking to us. And Barrel, right, once again, you. congratulations yes. for your ransom win.